Hi, it's Jeff Challen. In this Android screencast, we're going to talk about probably one of the, at least in my opinion, somewhat more confusing aspects of Android. That's something that Android refers to as an intent. What is an Android intent? So you can think of intents as a type of message that one application can send to another app. And intents are frequently used to trigger something to happen. So for example, I might want the camera to take a picture. I might want the file manager to open a file for me. I might want Chrome to display a web page. Um, and rather than having to build those features into my application, I can use the intent system to request to send a message to another application, essentially saying, hey, I'd like some help with something. I'd like you to do something for me. Um, this is a, a pretty sophisticated part of Android, and so I'm not going to make this long, and I'm not going to make it too complicated. And there's nothing that you have to do on this particular MP directly using intents, although um, for the Rickrolled part of the MP, you may want to explore using them to do things like open a YouTube video. But let's look at how the current app already uses intents. So there are two places in our app where we use an intent, and these correspond to um, places where the app asks something else to do something on its behalf. So let me rebuild, let me make sure that I have taken out my changes from the last screencast I have. I'm gonna rebuild my application, and then we're going to look at two places where our photo recognition app launches another application using an intent. Okay, so one of those places is the file manager. So here I'm asking the file manager to open a file for me. And you'll notice that when I, I do this by um, sending an intent, that causes the file manager to open. And then once I've selected my file, I receive information back from the file manager. In this case, the um, name of the file that the, that the user selected. You'll notice that if I launch the file manager directly, um, it looks very similar to the view that I get when I launch it from the application. So let me go back to my photo app. Um, the um, app's launching in an images directory, and that's because of information that I sent it as part of the intent. So that brings up um, images. Whoop. Let's see here. I wanted that cute dog, right? So. That's one place that our app uses intents. And the other place is the camera. So this is gonna be interesting. Um, I usually don't like to feature myself on a screencast, but here I am, hi. Um, so that's the second place that our app uses an intent. And this is, in many ways, a really powerful feature of Android because I'm getting all of the features of that other application for free. I don't have to build a camera into my application. You could, but it's a lot of work. I don't have to build a file browser into my application. Again, you could, but that would be a, a lot more work than I want to do. So let's see where those intents actually get used. Okay, so here's one place. This is called start open file, and this is a function that's run when the user clicks the open file button. You'll see I create a new intent, and the action field here indicates the type of request I'm making. I'm asking um, for something to open a document for me. I'm looking for files that are openable, and then this is a um, part of the intent that allows me to specify the kind of files I'm looking for. In this case, I'm launching a dialog that is supposed to allow the user to um, open an image. And then there's this call here called start activity for result. So this launches, this sends the intent, essentially. And what happens in this case is that the file browser responds to that intent, responds to that message by launching its own activity and then selects a file. The second place where I launch an intent is right here. It's just below in the start take photo. So this is triggered, as we showed, by the photo button. Again, I create an intent. In this case, I have a different action that I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to capture an image. Um, there's a little bit of extra work I have to do here to tell the camera where to put the image when it's done. Um, but again, down here at the bottom, I call start activity, and that is what causes the camera to start. Now in both cases, you'll notice when I actually call start activity, I have this um, special code that I put at the end. In this case, it's read request code. This is a, a constant that 
uh, we defined on our application. In this case, it's Im image capture request code. And the way that where that's used is right here. So this is a function that gets called when one of these activities, other activities that I've launched using an intent is finished. And what happens is when the camera app, when the user has selected a photo in the file browser or finished taking a picture of themselves with the camera app, this function runs. And it receives information about whether or not the request was successful. So it's possible that, you know, the, the so for example, down here you can see that um, I didn't take a picture of myself and so that activity failed. And down here I have some code that responds to the, the, the data, right? So if I was trying to get a file, I do one thing. If I was trying to get an image, I do something else. So this is a common pattern in Android applications. I send an intent um, using a function that's triggered by something that the user did. And then I have this handler function here that receives um, the result of that activity and then does something that's appropriate to the application.